Gabriel. Just the sound of my king's voice stirred my heart. I left my post at the entryway and stepped into the throne room. To my left was the desk on which sat the Book of Life. Ahead of me was the throne of Almighty God. I entered the circle of unceasing light, folded my wings before me to cover my face, and knelt before him. Yes, my lord? You have served the kingdom well. Never have you flinched in duty. Never have you flagged in zeal. But your greatest work lies ahead of you. Your next assignment is to carry a gift to earth. Behold. I lifted my eyes to see a necklace, a clear vial on a golden chain dangling from his extended hand. My father spoke earnestly. Though empty, this vial will soon contain my greatest gift. Place it around your neck. I was about to take it when a raspy voice interrupted me. And what treasure we you send earth this time? I stepped back and stared at God's enemy. He was completely covered. A black cassock hung over his skeletal frame, hiding his body and arms and hooding his face. The feet protruding beneath the robe were thrice toed and clawed. The skin on his hands was that of a snake. Talons extended from his fingers. He pulled his cape farther over his face as a shield against the light, but the brightness still pained him. Your news must be urgent, spat Satan to God, still unable to bear the light. My father's response was a pronouncement. The time has come for the second gift. The frame beneath the cape bounced stiffly as Lucifer chuckled. The second gift, eh? I hope it works better than the first. You're disappointed in the first? Oh, quite the contrary. I've delighted in it. Lifting a bony finger, he spelled a word in the air. C-H-O-I-C-E. You gave Adam a choice. And what a choice he made. He chose me. Ever since the fruit was plucked from the tree in the garden, I have held your children captive. They fell. Fast. Hard. They're mine. You have failed. You speak so confidently, replied the father, astounding me with his patience. Lucifer stepped forward, his cloak dragging behind him. Of course. I thwart everything you do. You soften hearts, I harden them. You teach truth, I shatter it. You offer joy, I steal it. Show me, O oh King of Light. Show me one person on earth who's always done right and obeys your will. Dare you ask? You know there need be only one perfect one. Only one sinless one to die for all the others. I know your plans, and you have failed. No Messiah will come from your people. There is none who is sinless, not one. Not Moses, not Abraham, not Lot, not Rebecca, not Elijah. The father stood up from his throne, releasing a wave of holy light so intense that Lucifer staggered backward and fell. Those are my children, you mock. You think you know much, fallen angel, but you know so little. Your mind dwells in the valley of self. Your eyes see no further than your own needs. The king walked over and reached for the book. He turned it towards Lucifer and commanded, Come, deceiver. Read the name of the one who will call your bluff. Read the name of the one who will storm your gates. Satan rose slowly off his haunches. Like a wary wolf, he walked a wide circle toward the desk until he stood before the volume and read the word, Emmanuel. Emmanuel? He muttered to himself then spoke in a tone of disbelief. God with us? For the first time, the hooded head turned squarely toward the face of the father. No, not even you would do that. Not even you would go so far. You've never believed me, Satan. But Emmanuel, the plan is bizarre. You don't know what it's like on earth. You don't know how dark I've made it. It's putrid. It's evil. It's, it's mine. And I will reclaim what is mine. I will become flesh. I will feel what my creatures feel. I will see what they see. But what of their sin? I will bring mercy. What of their death? I will give life. Satan stood speechless. I love my children. Love does not take away the beloved's freedom. But love takes away fear. And Emmanuel will leave behind a tribe of fearless children. They will not fear you or your hell. I will take away all sin. I will take away death. 
Without sin and without death, you have no power. Why? Why would you do this? The father's voice was deep and soft. Because I love them. From the circle of light came his extended hand. From the throne came an honest invitation. Will you surrender? Will you return to me? I do not know the thoughts of Satan, but I believe that for a fleeting second, the evil heart softened, the head cocked slightly, as if amazed that such an offer would be made, but then it yanked itself erect. Where will we battle? The father sighed at the dark angel's resistance. (sighs) On a hill called Calvary. If you make it that far... Satan smirked, spinning and marching out of the entryway. The father stood motionless for a moment, then turned back to the book. Opening the final chapter, he slowly read the words I had never heard. No sentences, just words, saying each, then pausing. Jesus, nail, cross, blood, tomb, life. He motioned toward me, and I responded, kneeling again before him, handing me the necklace he explained. This vial will contain the essence of myself, a seed to be placed in the womb of a young girl. Her name is Mary. She lives among my chosen people. The fruit of the seed is the Son of God. Take it to her. I lowered my head, and he draped the chain around my neck. Amazingly, the vial was no longer empty. It glowed with light. Jesus, tell her to call my son Jesus. Jesus.